I want to go back to a Canadian who we had on at some point over the last number of days, I'm not sure what day it was, a Canadian uh, stuck in Peru who still wants to come home. We've been uh, speaking pretty regularly with Greg Bestavros. Uh, he's stuck in a hostel in Cusco, Peru. Greg, um, good to see you again. So I, I know things hey. have actually gotten worse for you. Tell me what the situation is now. Um, so today is day 11 of our you know time spent on lockdown here at the hotel. Um, yesterday morning, we received information that somebody in our hostel did actually test positive for COVID-19. Um, as per direction of the Ministry of Health of Peru, the hostel has informed us that we are going to be locked down here for a duration of one to three months. Okay, and, and what, if anything, have you been able to get in terms of information from the Canadian government? So the difficulty is, is you know, I think I think there's obviously a, a very high volume of calls of people looking to reach out to SOS, um, people looking to reach out to various you know numbers that have been provided, be it you know local here in Peru or back home in Ottawa. Um, at this point, we have not heard back from anyone. Um, I've attempted to leave multiple messages. I've attempted to get a hold of people, you know, because three days ago we were informed that they were bringing a doctor into this hostel to test two people and pending the results, we would be locked down here for 28 days. Um, at that point in time, we were also told that there was no way that we were allowed to leave the hostel in the meantime. Um, so once the results came back positive, you know, the, the manager of the hostel had held a meeting and informed us of the circumstances and basically told us that we would be locked down here for one to three months um, you know I've preemptively tried to get this this information out to our government to see what kind of intervention could have happened uh, prior to something like this happening and you know my fiance and myself we've we've taken the precaution to quarantine ourselves in our room for the last five or six days you know worrying that something like this would happen and you know I, I wish that action had come you know swifter because now we're in a situation where I don't know if we're going to be able to make it home there are a couple of flights, uh, whether well, there's been one flight out of uh, Lima, Peru, but I know yeah. that the government's working on flights from Cusco. Uh, I don't know if you've had those updates, if you respond to that. Yeah, we, yeah. I, I checked on uh, Twitter this morning. You know, I've been I've been up every morning around 5.30 to 6 a.m. To, to try to see if there's any information that's been made available. This morning, the Canada in Peru Twitter page did inform, you know, the masses that they are going to have a flight from Cusco to Lima tomorrow. Um, you know, yesterday they had filled up tickets for a flight directly from Lima that will be leaving, I believe, this late, later on this afternoon. My fear is that, you know, we are locked down in this hotel now. Um, and we don't believe that we're going to be able to even take advantage of the chance of getting on that flight from Cusco to Lima because of the fact that this hostel has now been placed in a military quarantine. So if you left, what would happen? Or if you tried to leave, what would happen? Uh, we've told that if, we've been told that if we do not cooperate with the, you know, with the quarantine, we will go to jail for five to ten years here in Peru. Can can I ask you? I, I know you went down for a wedding. I know Peru wasn't on the list of countries at the time, but I also know that the world was starting to see this pandemic spread. Do you now regret going there and and taking this this? I guess it was a bit of a gamble, right? Uh, do you regret that? Yeah, I mean, I mean. Hindsight is always 2020, and I think you know I look back upon some of the decisions that we've made over the course of the past you know little while, and absolutely you know would we have done things differently? I would I would 100% say so. You know we went based on the advice of our government when we checked the travel advisory before we left, which told us that there was no need to worry. Um, Peru was a safe place. I think at the time that we had arrived, there was something like four cases here in Peru, and it didn't seem like uh, the situation that we're currently stuck in. Um, I don't think that anybody could have predicted the, the, the borders closing in a threshold of, of 24 hours. I don't think anybody could have predicted, you know, the, the very quick reaction that the Peruvian government had put in place to not only, you know, limit travel for leisure and domestic travel, but also to allow for foreign citizens to be able to get home. Um, so, yes, absolutely. You know, would we do things differently? Absolutely. 
but at this point, you know, we're we're left in this situation. You know, we've been in this hostel now for 11 days, waiting for a level of intervention from the government. And we've, you know, we've checked emails, we've filled out forms, we've waited for something to to happen. And, you know, our our worst fear has has seemed to come to light now. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll hope that government officials are, are watching you and listening, but they've also made it clear that not everybody's going to get home. So if you're not going to get home, uh, are you prepared? Are you are you how are you going to stay there for a month or more? I mean, at this point, it doesn't seem like we have very much of a choice. You know, I've 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 seen the toll that this situation has taken on, you know, our mental health. Um, I've seen the the anxiety attacks that have happened with my fiance, and I'm I'm genuinely worried for you know our our mental health. And now knowing that there's positive cases in this place that we're staying, um, I'm worried for my physical health. You know, and I've done everything that I can do to to mitigate any any risk. You know, we've only left our room to use the washroom or to grab food and to come back. There's been no social interaction. This has not been a vacation. Um, this is us sitting on our phones for you know 12 to 15 hours a day, waiting for some response, waiting for some action. You know, the Canadian government told us to stay put, abide by local law enforcement. You know, you can't go out onto the street so much as to to grab a you know something from the supermarket without having yeah. a police officer or somebody from the military stop you. You can imagine what that looks like when you are looking to potentially change, you know, the the lodging that you're staying at. You know, there there has not been the option for us to be able to check out and to leave mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. we were leaving to go home. Okay, Greg Bestavros, uh, thanks again for talking to us. I I, I know uh, I'm sure people were listening, uh, people in in government as well. And um, listen, I wish you the best, um, and at, and, and at very least good health as as this goes on. Please keep us posted as to what's happening. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Greg.